rep seminar, webinar. Welcome, Commissioner. Um, welcome, Margaret, in the digital economy and uh, the digital <laughs> times. So uh, it's great to see you here and uh, greetings to Bellemont. Oui? Yes. Yes. Can so, I give you a tour of the office or do we have already have callers? We have a lot of people watching us, being silly, but uh, you can, uh, of course, show your office. Okay, I'll give you a tour. Uh, this is my office. It's on the 10th floor of the Bellemont. Uh, I'm just trying to get... Yes, there you go. Uh, this is the one end. Uh, I'm trying to keep it uh, a little bit optimistic, because if you see the Bellemont, it's kind of a building to where you have to bring your own motivation. Uh, there you see the windows, my desk. Here you have in the middle of the room, does it work? Yes. The meeting table, Meta, who is one of my staffers, uh, and sort of the soft spot where we never end actually, we always end up by the meeting table. But that's of course because we're here to work. So this is where I am. I've been looking forward to, uh, to meeting you. Yes, Margaret. Uh, so um, be careful that not all the participants will now want to visit you in your office. But uh, I will give it now a formal start and then I hand over to you, Commissioner. So uh, first, welcome to the next edition uh, of Europe Calling. This time we speak uh, with a special guest, with a Commissioner for Competition uh, of the um, European Commission, obviously, she is, uh, and uh, it's known, and I will confess it here again, she's my favorite commissioner uh, in uh, the college. She has the power over subsidies. She has the power to ensure fair competition in a common market in Europe. And uh, this includes, of course, uh, also questions such as mergers and acquisitions. This includes uh, the control of unfair subsidies and, uh, and therefore it's well known uh, she has taken responsibility for a program which um, created a lot of public attention and uh, this is the control of tax-based uh, subsidies to multinational corporations which her team found uh, on a large scale illegal and uh, she is by far uh, the law has fined uh, with the largest amount by far one transnational corporation uh, is well known uh, to be uh, Apple in Ireland uh, for uh, the record and breathtaking sum of 13 billion plus mm. interest and uh, but this is uh, of course her role is not to find companies her role is to ensure that markets are run on a fair basis and many citizens are concerned over, over the growing concentration, in particular in the di digital age, so that we have companies such as Facebook, Google, Amazon, which take control over parts of our life. They take control what we see in our uh, stream on Facebook. They take control what we see on the internet when we Google. They know before we know ourselves what our wants are if we shop. Mm -hmm. So they take, in a certain way, very important uh, decisions. And uh, one of the founding fathers of German competition policy, Walter Eucken, he once said that um, competition policy and market economy is not over controlling um, that there is no uh, that, uh, controlling the power in markets, it, it is about of uh, stopping power in markets to appear. So basically, to have the ideal, to have a market in which no actor uh, holds true power. So we are far away from that ideal. Mm. Perhaps it's even not fit for the digital, the globalized age. This idea, but I'm curious to know. I'm curious to know what is your vision for controlling uh, corporate power and ensuring fair competition in a digital global age. But before I give uh, the floor to you, for the participants, you have the opportunity to follow that discussion also in German in a chat box. 
uh, you have the opportunity to ask questions either in writing, a first question has already arrived, you also have the opportunity to show your hand uh, electronically and speak directly to the commissioner. I will ensure that there will be short uh, questions and short answers so that many can uh, take the floor. And now, Commissioner, you have a few minutes uh, to introduce your vision. What does competition policy in a global digital age mean? Which powers will Europe need in order to make sure that uh, we collectively mm -hmm. uh, take, char take control of open markets and are not controlled by the power of uh, ever bigger global corporations. Please, uh, Margarete, you have the floor. Well, thank you very much. Um, it is obviously a big question, uh, but the, f the first thing, the one that uh, gets me out of bed in the morning is for competition law enforcement to serve the citizens. Uh, because if if the market is serving you and not just um, companies serving themselves, well then I think it influences the entire society. Obviously there is a difference between the markets and the society. But since we live in a regulated market economy, well then the competition or enforcement should make sure that the market actually do serve the citizens so that we can feel comfortable uh, trust that we're not being uh, cheated upon, that prices are not being agreed in the back office, uh, that businesses do not grow so big uh, and start to, to misuse a dominant position to extract from us things that they were never able to do if they were a sort of more uh, normally sized uh, company. And in, in doing that, well, we have our, our treaty. And the treaty, I think, is, is good because it deals with the very basics. And in that respect, I think that the digital economy is no different from an agricultural economy or an industrialized economy where you basically rely on manufacturing. Competition law enforcement is still about fighting greed or fear. It's the same. The new thing is that we have to sharpen our tools. Uh, we have to make sure that we can get it right. Uh, that we are as clever in, uh, in breaking down the, the data set, that we are as clever in, in finding uh, evidence of uh, a full play, uh, and also that we make sure that we get the right input, that we are available if citizens or competitors find that things are not as they should be, that they can easily find us for us to open a case if we find that there are any evidence uh, of fall play. Uh, and then, of course, uh, with, with the things that we see, we also work with colleagues here who are in charge of, uh, of data protection, uh, working with uh, the European Parliament on improving our rights as citizens when it comes to, to data, uh, because competition law enforcement does not exist in a vacuum in, in, alone. Uh, of course, we have our rules of procedure. This is a union built on the rule of law, but obviously we inform one another. Uh, and I think a very good example of that is the, uh, the German uh, Bundeskartellamt, uh, who are in the process of looking into whether Facebook has been so dominant in some uh, markets that they have sort of pushed some of their users to accept uh, lesser protection of their privacy. Uh, and they do that both with German uh, set of legal glasses and European set of legal glasses. And it's a good example both of trying to explore sort of the gray zones between competition law and privacy, but also a good example as to how sort of the European Commission can work with uh, authorities in member states. And in that, I think we can serve the citizen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will abstain from uh, immediately asking uh, my own questions and rather give the citizens here the floor. Uh, only be ensured you can also write your questions in German. We will translate them. Uh, don't be scared. And, and in any case, the commissioner speaks more languages than she openly admits. So uh, the, um, I start with the first uh, question which arrived here. Uh, it's from Costas uh, Rosso Blue, very difficult. Seven years 
since the launch of the EU investigation into Google search manipulation practices, the European Commission has yet to deliver on its promise of protecting consumers and restoring competition. In the meantime, many of the complaints have been forced to close down their business, uh, sorry, uh, of the uh, uh, complainants, of the complainants have been forced to close down their businesses not being able to survive Google's predatory practices. This affecting both SMEs and consumers alike. The latest company to withdraw from the EU market has been Yelp, an US multinational specialized in online reviews. Google has been promoting its own reviews service blocking competitors from its universal search. As a result, European consumers do not benefit from the same level of innovation as their counterparts in other parts of the world. Will the European Commission conclude its investigation in the coming months? What is causing the delay in delivering a decision against Google's search bias? A oh, very concrete question, Commissioner. Well, and a, and a very good uh, question indeed, uh, because it's a very good example of what uh, may happen if a company is misusing a dominant position that other companies and therefore also citizens suffer uh, because the risk is that the behavior that we accuse Google of is of course a risk that no other company uh, for instance within shopping comparison can show their products uh, to us as citizens and therefore as potential customers uh, which is why it is a priority case and uh, First, my predecessor tried to solve it by taking commitments from Google. So there was a lot of back and forth in order to try to solve it with commitments, which sometimes is the quickest way to go about a case like this. But that was unsuccessful. So when I came into office, we sort of refreshed uh, the data of the case and sent uh, a statement of objection to Google. Then Google had to, to answer that, uh, and we sort of accused them exactly of, of what was, uh, was in the question, favoring themselves uh, in their uh, shopping comparison to the detriment of others who were doing shopping comparison as well. We had to do a supplementary statement of objection, and now we are sort of in the process of finalizing going through their answers. Uh, so the concrete answer to, to why the delay is actually the fact that we're living in, in a union based on the rule of law, that we have to be very thorough to make sure that, that we get it right, that you are innocent until we find that we can prove that you actually did the wrongdoing. So basically you cannot say that you will come out with a decision in the next month. That was the question. You cannot promise. That's what I get. I can never promise anything because I learned it the very hard way the first year I was the commissioner. Uh, to say, well, I think we can be done by the second quarter uh, next year. And then uh, all of a sudden I, I started hearing uh, that, oh, speed is more important to the commissioner uh, than anything else. So probably she'll jeopardize uh, the rule of law, our right to defend ourselves, which is why I never give uh, concrete deadlines. Okay, I will now try to give the floor to Alexandra Martini who is asking, will speak directly to you, if mm -hmm. this works. Alexandra, can you hear us and ask a short and precise question to the Commissioner? Hmm. Normal. Hello, Alexandra. While you seem to try to find your microphone, uh, I read another one which came in writing. So there is. Oh, okay. Uh, I read it. Question for the Commissioner from Martin Schmalzried. A study carried out in 2007 in the US showed that antitrust laws only recuperate one fifth of the profits made from violating the law creating moral hazard. Given the current situation and obstacles, extremely long court cases, shifting government priorities, sabotaging antitrust, 
very little means for public authorities investigating these problems, shouldn't we shift completely the EU strategy and invest in open source, decentralized solutions like Linux or blockchain, which escape completely the market, com the market competition, yet create tremendous value for the digital economy? Well, I don't see that as, as contradictions. Uh, I think the technologies mentioned, both lin uh, open source as such, uh, Linux, uh, blockchain, they are very important technologies because they can sort of open up the way the digital economy works to allow many more people to participate uh, and for many more businesses uh, to be part of an ecosystem which is not necessarily part of the present uh, ecosystem. With the present ecosystem, I think it is very important that we work very hard uh, to enforce uh, our competition law and that we do that with the national competition authorities. Uh, because if we want to get hold of as many cartelists as possible, uh, well, then of course we need not only European ears and eyes, but also national uh, ears and eyes. And, and one of the things that we're working with right now is to make sure that also the national competition authorities can uh, give out fines that have a sufficiently deterrent level. Uh, because in some member states, uh, I think that the fines are way too low to hold any kind of deterrence. So I think we should do both. Bring on board as many new technologies as possible also talk to uh, public administration when they transform uh, their way of doing administrative procedures, but at the same time make sure that we have sharp tool, dedicated uh, people, and make it a priority uh, to find uh, cartoonists uh, and misuse of dominant position wherever it is. Mm -hmm. So, I will now read another question from Jutta Sundermann, she's reading the f she's writing the followers. Dear Madam Vestager, most mergers pass your examinations. Corporations become very big in a lot of branches, which in a lot of sectors, I guess, which rules have to be changed to protect democracy, suppliers, environment, and so on. How important is, for example, the, the impact of big companies, uh, lobbyists in your negotiations and decisions? I think that is a question many people are very concerned about. And uh, what is your experience with the nasty lobbyists? So, uh, and uh, how strongly pressure they uh, put their pressure on you to uh, take, if you take the, your decisions, how strongly do member states uh, put pressure on you so that you take decisions they regard as more in their interest? Well, um, very early on uh, I took the decision not to, to meet with lobbyists uh, because I need to meet with people who take decisions in a business. Uh, if we have a merger that is problematic and we need for, for the businesses to, to solve a competition problem because they become too big or there will be input for closure so that the people that they supply with things cannot get the supplies at affordable prices so they, they will divest something. Well, then of course we need to talk with the people in charge, those who can take decisions. Uh, and that is not the lobbyist. The second thing is that this is not because I'm a better person than anyone else. It is to protect the legitimacy of what we do. Because if we were just taking care of the, bis the, the interest of one business over another, well, then rightfully they would ask, well, uh, this is not legitimate. And the same thing with member states. If we said, oh, we're always on the side of smaller member states, or always on the side of uh, Eastern member state or whatever, then obviously again people could rightfully ask. It's it's not legitimate. Um, on the question of how to protect our democracy and our environment, I think it is very important to protect the environment with environment legislation. Uh, this should not be left for the processes of, of one business merging with another. Uh, this should be in the, in the legislation in the European legislation, our common legislation, and in national legislation. 
because then of course we will work in that framework uh, to see if, if the merger can, can be cleared. Um, it is correct that a number of mergers, they, they are cleared in phase one without any further ado, uh, but we do have a number of very big uh, merger cases that are only cleared after substantial uh, divestment or commitments by the companies to make sure that also post-merger that there is uh, competition so that their suppliers uh, or those who buy uh, their, their things can still have choice, innovation, uh, affordable prices. Mm -hmm. I would like to read one question which goes in a similar direction. It's mm -hmm. by Michael Krack. Uh, the uh, acquisition of Monsanto by Bayer is discussed very controversially and especially very critically because of ecological issues of their agricultural products. The Commission has still to decide on that case. But how do you see the competition between ecology and ecology, economic growth? In, how, in which regard are you, as the European Commissioner for Competition, pursuing climate and ecological goals? Well. I think, I think it is important that we do not leave everything to competition law enforcement or merger control. It is very, very important that we have uh, strong legislation. It is very important that the Paris Climate Agreement is being put into, into, uh, into effect. Uh, because competition law enforcement cannot do the full trick. If we want a better environment, if we want to fight climate change, we need much more than competition law enforcement. Then we can do murder control within that, the legislative framework of our democracies. Um, and we have been doing a number of mergers, as, as, the, the, as uh, Michael uh, says, we are not done with the Bayer Monsanto merger, but we have been doing a couple of other mergers in this industry, which is quite concentrated already. And what of course is important is not only that farmers still have choice when it comes to buying seeds uh, and buying pesticides, but also that the companies can still innovate and compete in innovation uh, because we need uh, still better and less harmful uh, pesticides uh, to be developed, which is why also innovation plays a role in, in dealing with uh, these mergers. Uh, so it's not just price and choice, it is also how will this work in the future? Uh, because you know, of course, that in Europe we put uh, very hard pressure uh, on our agricultural industry uh, to improve and to use fewer and fewer pesticides, as it, in my opinion, should be. I will now try again to give someone directly the floor, uh, and that is Udo Philipp. To be transparent, he is also the co-spokesperson of the German Greens work Economic Working Group. So let's see whether this works any better. Udo, you have the floor. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I yes. can hear you. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Sven, and thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Vestager. I think it's really fantastic that you're taking the time to go to such an online meeting. I thank you, thank you very much. Um, before I uh, worked for the Greens, um, I was a senior partner at uh, one of the leading um, European private equity companies. Um, when I did that, I was responsible for a couple of quite uh, large mergers, which also went to the Commission. Um, we did these mergers at that point in time because we were thinking to consolidate the market, to get um, um, to a um, market where we had only a couple of partic participants who controlled most of the market, and then with the pricing power, um, or say with the pricing discipline uh, of this handful of participants, to have a much more stable market with, with, with much uh, better, um, better prices. I was astonished that um, we had no problems in getting these cases through. Um, so my questions to you are, um, how do you see this type of implicit oligopoly oligopolistic behavior where you have a handful of market participants who do not fix prices, but who just behave sort of in a disciplined manner? The next question I have, um, to my knowledge, the uh, Commission does not ask for all internal memos 
um, all internal emails and, and all these things. Why do you not do that? Because um, then it makes it much more difficult uh, to, to, uh, to do these type of, um, to, to do this type of things. If I may ask a last final question or no, no, two questions are fine. There are many more people waiting. Sorry for this. Uh, Commissioner, please. Well, the, the thing is that um, if we want to accuse you of something, we should be able to prove your wrongdoing. Uh, and of course, if you can do uh, d disciplined behavior without ever uh, talking, without having any kind of sort of uh, neither uh, sort of in, in the closed circle or in the public uh, price signaling, then of course it can be very difficult to prove. Uh, and as I said, living in a union based on the rule of law, we have to prove our cases. But I think that the case law is, is quite sophisticated uh, in saying that also sometimes uh, what would be considered price signaling in public space uh, could be signed up of uh, collusion. Um, I don't know uh, why exactly we may not ask uh, all internal memos. Um, what I do know is that our case files, they have grown to unforeseen uh, sizes. Um, on the, the truck cartel, in itself, I think the case team went through uh, 300,000 documents uh, in order to, to find the smoking gun. And even though, of course, a lot of data mining uh, is done, sometimes actually you also have to go uh, through. Uh, that being said, of course, some memos will be excluded because of legal uh, privilege. Uh, but that, of course, we, we guard very carefully in order for that not just to, to sort of uh, all of a sudden encompass uh, all documents because as you say for obvious reasons we need a lot of internal uh, correspondence uh, in order to find proof in our cases. Hmm. There's another question by Karl de Wirtz and I will read it. Do you think there is a dependency on the, of the Commission on Microsoft software and if so uh, how could the EU stop the dependency of the Commission and the national administrations on Microsoft? That, that I simply don't know. Um, I have absolutely nothing to do with our own, uh, own IT, so I don't know if we have this dependency, uh, and I don't know how they, what they think about it. Uh, the only thing which is obvious is that we use a lot of public tenders, uh, in order to get uh, the best possible deals, we are publicly financed, so of course we should be, be prudent and get the best possible prices. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes here in the Parliament I doubt that anyone is seriously responsible for our IT. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so a question from Thomas Dürmeyer. Um, UNCTAD would be a good forum of global policy cooperation and competition policy. Why is there no competition policy for the Global South? There is a too strong focus on European champions, not global consumer benefits, especially in the Global South. Uh, is there a need for a new forum and new fora for international competition policy? Well, I think we have to, to develop what we do. There are a, a number of fora already. Uh, for me directly, the most important fora uh, is the International Competition Network. And the thing about the network is that it is high on substance, but low on protocol. Uh, it is truly working as a network uh, where people come together uh, in working groups, uh, trying to figure out how to sort of streamline procedures to make sure that we minimize red tape for businesses, but sort of maximize um, uh, law enforcement. Uh, that can be mergers, uh, how to do that. Uh, I had a merger last year which were notified in, in 28 uh, jurisdictions. So obviously there is a need uh, to work together. Uh, when it comes to cartels, uh, we in the network, we are organized so that we can organize down rates so they, they take place at the same, same time, no matter the time zone. So if a company has uh, um, sites uh, basically all over the globe, we can knock at the door at the same time. Um, 
also the the OECD has a very strong uh, uh, competition working group uh, in order to try to push also for sort of the legislative uh, part of it uh, where we sort of are more in the international competition network very much sort of hands-on uh, how to develop uh, the law enforcement, how to coordinate better, how to work better together uh, to supplement what we do sort of a, a more sort of bilateral uh, way of working uh, because I completely agree uh, that since we have global markets uh, and we have globalization as such obviously we need to have not only the ambition but also put some effort into having uh, global law enforcement. Mm -hmm. There's another question by Markus Drenger which I uh, will read to you. In times of big data and public services signing contracts with Google, IBM or Huawei for smart cities or autonomous driving, will the Commission uh, propose new antitrust uh, law for data gathered by public and private institutions such as sensors, maps, government data? Well, we, we try, so to speak, to, to prepare ourselves uh, for uh, data cases uh, because obviously uh, data plays a very important role when it comes to competition. If you have huge sets of data, it can both work as a barrier to entry, uh, it can work uh, as a very strong sort of uh, innovation tool, uh, but it can also, on the completely other side of things, uh, be very easily copied or replicated or have a very short duration. So, so basically we find both. We both find that there is a risk that uh, ownership of huge uh, amounts of data can be an issue, but also that sometimes it cannot. So we're sort of starting to, to prepare ourselves. Uh, second, colleagues here in the Commission work exactly with the question of data ownership when it comes to uh, publicly gathered information. Then how to access it, who can access it, how to make it available for others to, to innovate, uh, to open a business. Um, but this is in the hands of, uh, of the, the Commissioner for, for Digital Issues, which used, used to be uh, Günther Ittinger and for Vice President uh, Andrews uh, Ansip for exactly the reasons I, I, I think I hear in the question uh, that you need to deal with this uh, because the ownership of data and the access to use data that has been provided by public means is of course a very important thing in developing our digital economy in another way than just letting the businesses already big uh, do the development. Hmm. There's another interesting question by uh, Holger Zieting and uh, I translate from German. Uh, how does the EU want to enforce actually the recently decided sanctions against Facebook? And if I may add, uh, when will Apple finally pay the 13 billion plus interest? So, so far the Irish government has not taken the, the necessary means in order to make Apple pay. So how do you want to make sure that the companies are actually paying? Well, on, on the Apple side of things, uh, of course it is for the Irish authorities uh, to make sure that Apple pays the taxes that they are supposed to pay. Also the 13 uh, billions, uh, more or less, uh, that we find that, that they are supposed to pay. Uh, and we're in close contact with the Irish authorities because even though you have said I do not accept this decision, I want to go to court and have a second say, that doesn't uphold uh, the decision to actually uh, recover the money. Uh, and since the deadline has, has passed, uh, we are sort of telling the Irish that they, they should get on with it. Of course we respect that you have to be sort of careful when you have to deal with uh, 13 billion euros. But on the other hand side, it is also very important that the money are being recovered, as they have been in, in the Starbucks case and in the Fiat case. And as they are about to be recovered, I think halfway through in the Belgian scheme, where 35 multinational uh, had uh, tax uh, benefits that were selective and for them only. On, um, on the Facebook fine uh, for not uh, telling us what they actually could do with uh, with combining data from Facebook and, and WhatsApp, 
uh, I just signed the letters uh, of the fine uh, three days ago. It was no four days ago, uh, and then they will pay. Uh, and that is a real fine. Uh, it's a fine of two times uh, 55 million euros, 110 million in total. It goes into the EU European budget, and then the member states have their contribution uh, reduced. Uh, so basically, it goes back uh, to the citizens in, in each and every member state. Of course, it's not many euros that sort of could be delivered back uh, to each citizen, but at the same time, I think it's a it's a very good principle uh, that the money doesn't come in uh, just for European purposes, but actually are being sort of sent back uh, to the member states where the citizens uh, could have been harmed. Hmm. There's one more question, which actually uh, I could have written just after your introductory statement by Peter Behrendt. And uh, he's basically addressing the general issue of that conversation. Mm -hmm. in, in digital markets, uh, the rule of the winner takes it all has created uh, most Kasai monopoles through growing market power rather than mergers. Don't we need legal possibilities to force divestments of Kasai monopoles that are created that way, such as uh, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and the like? And I may add, do, do we not rather need a real supervisory authority? So if we accept that a market in, in bread is different from a, from a Facebook, because there's only one Facebook, where there is much easier to create lots of bread manufacturers. Isn't there a need beyond your traditional competition policies to have a real European supervisory authority for the digital industries? Well, obviously you're, you're right that these are different markets. And, and I find the interesting I find that the discussion that's it's intriguing because on the one hand side uh, our merger control makes sure that you cannot sort of buy yourself a nice little uh, monopoly or duopoly and then set prices for the future that's part of the purpose of mer merger control on the other hand side uh, we do not have a, a ban against monopolies uh, they do have that in other jurisdictions but we do not have that in Europe so our, our, our treaty in Europe says that you can grow, but you cannot misuse your position. Um, and actually, I don't know. I haven't, uh, I haven't made up uh, my mind personally, because I think it is important also that businesses can grow. It is important that you can become a success. Um, and, and, you know, I, I just find it somewhat uh, difficult to say, well, now you're too big. Who, who is going to, to decide that? I think what, what we can do at least so far is to say, now you're not playing by the rules anymore. And if that is the case, then we have all our legal tools. We can take, make prohibitions. We can hand out fines. And that is a much more sort of black and white issue than when are you too big, when should things be divested, and that I find a little mm -hmm. tricky how to deal with that. So you said divestment goes too far, but why not a permanent supervisory authority once you have accepted that there are Kasai monopolies in the digital market, why don't we call uh, for a true and permanent supervisory authority rather than just chasing monopoly powers with one case after the other, which is a very cumbersome case-based work while it allows in other fields for the respective monopolies to misuse their power until you afterwards with your case law uh, chase them again. But one then has to consider what should be the powers of this supervisor. Um, obviously no one is, is shy of supervision. In the, within the banking union we have a, a European banking supervisor, so it, it's not that the concept is, is, is not sort of known and understood. But you would want to know what part of the legislation should this supervisor supervise? Um, because if you are found to be uh, not even necessarily a monopoly, but in a dominant position, 
then you sort of enter into uh, different waters than being one competitor among other competitors. You have more obligations as a dominant company. And at the same time, of course, you have all kinds of obligation in other kinds of legislation of, uh, of uh, data protection, uh, privacy, IP, honoring other people's rights when it comes to copyright. So what should be the competences? Also because in these areas we still have slightly different sets of, of, uh, of legislation uh, among member states. So I would, I find it's tricky to say, well, what should this uh, supervisor do? Well, uh, of course, from a green perspective, Commissioner, allow me to, to say, I think they could uh, police, for instance, Jan Philipp Albrecht's great work on European data protection. Obviously, it was a directive, uh, but uh, uh, there is enough work to do. This debate will continue. I understand you have mm -hmm. to leave, and I don't want uh, to uh, bring you into difficulty in front of all these people uh, that... Uh, so I would really like to thank you and remind all those who couldn't answer, ask you their questions. You have the right to write to the European mm -hmm. Commission in your own language if you have any special uh, questions and uh, concerns to address. Uh, they are even uh, under obligation to answer very quickly in your own language. And, uh, and you can enter in the commission, with the Commission in a, in a real conversation. Mm -hmm. I can only say the European Commission has a much more open culture than national administrations. Yes. Uh, and that's why the Euro this Europe calling is also a way of proving that there is a difference. I thank the Commissioner uh, a lot for participating in this. We will uh, continue our conversations in the ECON committee and I wish you uh, wise decisions when it comes uh, to these difficult questions. And of course, you know what green voters ex uh, expect from you. Uh, we don't want to see a mega power between Monsanto and Bayer. And uh, we will be watching carefully uh, how you evaluated the case. And I know you will take a very serious and fact-based decision. And I thank you for participating in this. And I would invite everybody who has precise questions right to the Commission mm -hmm. and test their answers. And not only are we obliged to answer, we'd also be more than happy to answer. Because what is the point of, uh, of trying to do your best if people feel that they cannot uh, access you? So not only questions, but also if you find that they are full play or you are doubtful as to whether you should go to the Commission or your National Competition Authority, you're more than, more than welcome uh, to write us. And I'll see you, uh, Sven, probably in the competition working group next week. Uh, that will be web streamed as well, if I know the European Parliament uh, well. Uh, so there are plenty of opportunities uh, to get in touch, or at least to, to get in touch with you and to uh, call in the next time uh, Europe is calling. I think this is a, this is a great effort. Uh, because it gives an opportunity that's otherwise not open to people like me uh, and to uh, citizens who have asked, I think, for me, challenging and very precise questions. So thank you very much uh, for hosting this event, but also for everyone who has participated. So obviously I will take up that opportunity and with some time uh, passing by, we will re-invite re -invite you and I will also try to get your colleagues to join that format. So after you have done, uh, uh, you have led by example, uh, I'm sure others will be having a difficult time to resist. Thank you, Commissioner, and have a good day. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks to you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.